Hi guys, um, so today I'm going to be doing a review of my Dart XL Extreme version 2. Um, this is my version 1, it's probably about, I don't know, 18 months old or something like that now. Been crashed several times and really was a fantastic learning platform for me to be able to understand a lot more about wings and flight characteristics and how to modify them etc. Um, so uh, this one is going to be retired and just going to be hung on the wall basically. Um, so I've transferred all of the electronics from the old one into the new one plus I've made several changes to this one to hope it make it even better than the first one. So uh, yeah we're going to be covering that in a little bit more detail. Um, so this is going to be like the part one of this series. Then we're going to take it out and we're going to maiden it and see how it maidens. Then we're going to do some tuning and then we're going to have some fun uh, and try and do some really nice HD flights. Okay guys, so uh, let's take a little bit more of a closer look. Okay, so before we get into the detail of the powertrain, I just want to talk about what I've done to try and protect the, uh, the plane overall. You can probably see from my old Dart XL that on the, uh, the ends of the wings here, there is some damage, uh, especially underneath, and some mud stains. And you can see on the fuselage here that um, once the foam gets broken and re-glued, and you can also see you know, where it gets scuffed as you land on, on muddy ground, it stains the, the foam. So what I've done is I'm, I'm, I'm trying out this new product called Foam Armour. So this is a, a, a compound that you brush on and it dries clear and it leaves a protective layer, hard protective or semi-hard protective layer, a bit like laminating it. Uh, not going to be as strong as laminate for sure, but like laminating it, but it makes it waterproof and should make it a bit scuff proof. So I've actually coated the entire fuselage of the plane. So I'm not sure if you can see in this light, but the fuselage is slightly shiner in a slightly different shade of white than the actual wing itself. Um, so I've coated the entire fuselage with this stuff. You can maybe see that underneath. Um, and I've also coated the actual wing tips of the plane. So these end, these end plates and these, down, these uh, downward facing winglets um, are also coated and in the right light. You might be able to see that the coating ends just beyond that first line before the end of the, uh, the wing tip. So yeah, hopefully that will, will help and if I do land in some muddy water or it gets dirty I'll just be able to wipe it down but we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works. The only time I've used it so far is on my AR Pro just on the tops of the winglets and um, it landed in long grass upside down the other day, it flipped over on landing and the wing tips were fine and they're quite delicate so hopefully it's going to do a good job. So going back underneath again, um, I've done the same thing with this plane as I did with the AR Pro. So. I've mounted um, using the same kind of mount for the, the Crossfire Nano, which sits in there really nicely. And then I've got a cover, which is like an interference fit cover with a hole to hold the, um, the antenna in place. So I'll just pop that on and show you what that looks like. So the good thing about, inter about foam is you, you don't need to worry about gluing everything in because it's an interference fit. It'll just pop in and it'll hold itself in there really tightly. So I'm just gonna pop that press that in there so that's an interference fit and it's got some air vents on it to keep it really uh, cool. So um, the other thing I've done I've learned from the old um, Dart XL is that when you land on these downward facing um, wing tips they kind of grind away on the ground so I've just created these these 3D printed skid plates there which hopefully will help to stop that grinding away and of course this plane uh, comes as standard with the um, with the ball joint um, servo rods um, for the servo, servo arms and the, the, uh, the horns. So yeah, much better than the, uh, the old fashioned kind of piece of bent wire. Um, same on the AR Pro, great addition by ZOHD I think to include those. Um, the only other thing I've made is uh, these little push in, uh, in again interference fit caps. So where the servo cables go through to the plugs to go through into the fuselage, made a couple of these interference fit caps and they just pop in like that and then keep it nice and neat and hopefully give a little bit of a better airflow. So um, that's the, uh, basically the protection elements for the plane. Um, let's have a look, look at the, uh, the powertrain now. So starting at the back, um, we've got the, uh, I removed the stock motor which is, I've got to say, so much better than the original motor from 18 months ago. Um, that motor was replaced quite quickly because it became very kind of uh, shaky, a lot of vibration in it. So um, I've replaced the stock motor, which 
is a sunny sky with this sunny sky mark 3 2216 dash 7 uh, to uh, 1250 kV. I absolutely love this motor on this plane and uh, I'm running the, uh, the, the trusty Aeronaut Cam Carbon Light 9x5 prop on this setup. So I'm hoping to get 75 to 80 uh, milliamp hours per kilometre uh, out of this thing. Um, stock 40 amp ESC sitting inside this little ESC mount that I made. And then we've got the actual F405, Matek F. Matek F405 underneath this cover, which I'll show you in a bit when I take it off. Uh, I've got the HDLRC GPS, and I've got the, um, the AKK uh, FX2 Ultimate, uh, which is the 2 watt VTX, and that's sitting in a position so it gets maximum airflow from um, the air that's passing through this cover. So um, I'm sure you're going to be able to see this on the camera, it's quite difficult to see, I think, but um, the actual VTX itself is sitting right in front of that hole. So the air is blasting straight across the top of the heat sink, um, give it maximum cooling. I've learned since I got an RF meter that uh, overheating a VTX or a VTX getting hot seriously can seriously degrade its performance. And uh, you don't need that, of course, when you're trying to go long range. Um, the only other thing moving forward on the top is the, uh, is the VTX mount. So where this, uh, this GPS cover normally goes where they say put the GPS in here. I wanted to use that for my VTX mount like on the, uh, the version one. Um, so I just made this simple 3D mount. It's nice and lightweight and that just drops in there and that allows me to mount my uh, VTX antenna centrally on the plane. Um, yeah, I don't think there's really much to, to shout about inside the, uh, the front cover, the battery bay. Um, the only thing is, is I always use in my battery bays this kind of anti-slip matting. I bought a big roll of it and I just cut it to size. And when you put a LiPo on top of that, um, trust me, that when you, that LiPo is strapped down, it, it really doesn't want to slide backwards and forwards, uh, which is quite useful. I want to keep the, the, sea of, the center of gravity always the same. You know, we don't want a LiPo sliding around in flight when you're doing any kind of acrobatics. I also put a piece of foam in between the LiPo and the back of the GoPro, so if there is a crash and there's kind of inertia pushing the LiPo forward, it won't smash into the back of the, uh, the GoPro itself and, uh, and, and break the rear screen of the GoPro. So uh, the only other thing that's uh, notable on the top is just the usual JJB um, plane finder, lost plane finder, powered by its own LiPo with a flashing LED and buzzer that flashes for a few hours. So yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty much everything that I've done um, to it. Um, move on now and just show you inside the cover and how, how that works. Okay, so we've got the cover off and you can see mounted inside, we've got the F405 wing. Um, it's actually mounted onto one of these uh, remixed um, FC mounts that I found on Thingiverse. So, Basically, got this like little locking mechanism. Actually, I do have one still in my old XL and it's been absolutely perfect. So you can see there's one installed in here. Um, I can actually hold the flight controller and shape the plane. It's so solid when it's locked in place. And to unlock, unlock it, just simply move these two tabs like that. So it's open and just lift the flight controller out. So really convenient and this is bonded into the plane. So. Um, if you want to do any maintenance on your FC, replace it, get access to the SD card or whatever, then uh, that little setup works really, really well. Okay, um, so that's what the, uh, the, the flight controller looks like with the cover off. Uh, I also made this, uh, this little mount for the uh, ESC. It just fits in there nicely, so uh, just holds it in place and keeps everything nice and aligned. And uh, the cover itself, so the first cover that I designed was this one um, I had the hole in the, in the center so that you could actually drop it on and plug in the actual USB through the hole but the problem with that was I couldn't get the VTX far enough back to be able to close the uh, top cover so I had to redesign it with uh, the VTX moved much further back um, and um, created this obviously extension so just got a little single PDP USB micro uh, in there, uh, made this little simple extension cable that just plugs into the FC and then the cover drops down on top uh, and that allows me to have the extension in here where you can 
connect it to iNav uh, for convenience so you don't have to keep removing the cover to get access to the USB. Um, obviously the, uh, the connectors for the uh, GPS and the uh, VTX just plug in and then you just drop it down onto the board. Now it's held in place because at the front it's slightly it's slightly wider than, than this is slightly wider than the fuselage, so it's a nice press fit. And in the back there are some magnets which have been embedded into the actual base of the cover, and you can probably see in the actual base of the fuselage here um, there's actually two corresponding magnets that have been bonded in there. So yeah, that's how it all fits together. So uh, I'll just put the cover back on and we'll just power it up and we'll see how it works with iNav. Okay, so you can see um, I've got the cover back on now and uh, I've got it connected from the USB extender into the laptop with iNav and uh, move the plane, you can see that everything's working as it should. So it makes it really convenient when you want to do any adjustments um, with iNav to be able to uh, just plug it in without having to uh, remove the cover. Okay, so that's the summary of this, uh, this Dart XL version two build. Um, I'm really excited to move on to the next stage and made in it. Um, I love this first one so much. I mean, I had so much pleasure and joy out of this plane. It was unbelievable. So I've really spent a lot of time thinking about, you know, some of the shortcomings of that one and how I can make this one better. Um, so yeah, hopefully, you know, some of the things that I've done. I have no idea how this foam armor on the fuselage, this stuff, is actually going to work out. Um, I've only used it just on the wingtips of my AR Pro so far. Uh, it did flip over in some fairly long grass of the day and they were absolutely fine. So fingers crossed this stuff will, uh, you know, will be really good. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be my new long range platform. So using this, uh, this 10,000 milliamp hour Lion pack, I should be able to beat my, my 15 kilometers out um, record quite easily. Um, and who knows, maybe even 25 kilometers out at a 50K round trip. So uh, those, uh, those long range attempts will also be coming up in, uh, in future flight videos. So that's it for today. Um, See you at the next one, The Maiden, and uh, take care.